starting a new series. It's spirit, soul, and body. Now, we're going to stay basic today, but we're going to go pretty deep in this, and I need you to lean in. Get your sermon notes out. We're going to dig in, and we're talking about spirit, soul, and body. Uh, today, the subtitle is created in three, and uh, we're, let me pray. Father, help me to unfold this to where people can understand it, Lord God, that they are a spirit, that they have a soul, that they live in a body. Father, help us to be spiritual. Help us to understand spiritual things. Help us to receive them in the good soul of our spirit, Lord God, that we might live by your word in our spirit all the days of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 is our foundation. We're going to bounce off of this. I want to prove to you and show you today that we're three parts. And I need you to start recognizing the different parts that you are. And uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.23, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now there's more in this than body, soul, and spirit, but I want you to look. It says you are a spirit. You have a soul, and you live in a body. You with me? Anybody riding a car today? The car's the body. The engine's the power of it, but the whoever's driving is the soul and spirit of it. Car's a good car. But that rascal, you can, you know, somebody can get in your car and drive and run over people or run through the building. It's not the car, it's who's in control. That's why you see people do, the kids go on stupid things. Because they're living in their soulical man, or the Bible says flesh, our, our, our soul, flesh, and, and so we have to be spiritual, so we'll, we'll break it down even more. But look, man has a body, he possesses a soul, uh, and a tremendous life force called his spirit. And, and you have a spirit on the inside of you, and God wants all three to be in unity. Remember the scripture, to worship God in spirit and in truth? In spirit? So, so here's the thing. What keeps you from walking in the Spirit is your solical man. Recognize this is a hindrance to your spirit man. And your body is going to do whichever one takes control. My flesh is say, slap him. My body said, okay. My spirit man says, no. Now I'm like, ooh, you know what to do. But you know it's not godly. I'm getting ahead of myself. But learn to recognize, you know, all three of these. Let's look at God in three parts. Uh, and I always quote Acts 10, 38. It's not in your notes if you want to write it down. But how God, the Father, anointed the Holy Spirit, Jesus of Nazareth, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Now, now, now we're gonna, we'll talk about Jesus, break it down some. But let's look at God in three parts real quick. Uh, the witness of three parts. First, um, First John five seven. It says, "For there are three that bear witness in heaven: the Father, the Word." Stop right there. John one one says, "In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God." And then in verse fourteen, the Word became flesh. Jesus was the Word. He's the incarnation, the spoken Word of God, and He became flesh. Okay, He was God, but He became flesh. He was God from times past, but he became flesh. When he was spoken by the angel into Mary, Mary received him. I Be that done unto me. Jesus became flesh in her womb. Okay? He laid aside his deity. It's a little, little it's more difficult. I'm trying to keep it simple today. But Jesus is the son of God, but he's also the son of man. And when he walked on the earth, he laid aside the Son of God part, and said, the Son of Man has come. Now, why is that? Why is that so important? Because he had to be a man to be our sacrifice. He had to go through. He had to get tired. He had to get hungry. He had to get frustrated with his flesh. He had his solo command he had to deal with, just like we do. But he walked in the Spirit. Jesus is called the second Adam, and we'll get into that in the next two or three weeks. The first Adam was a spiritual man. Okay, and so Jesus uh, was flesh, and, and then if you look, 
uh, and keep reading it there. We'll put, the, put that scripture back up there. Uh, these three are one, Holy Spirit. So in Luke 3.22, the Holy Spirit descended upon him, Jesus. Holy Spirit, he got baptized. The Holy Spirit came down, not a dove. Don't be bringing me feathers and say the Holy Spirit's here. He came and he came down uh, like a dove. Some saw it, saw the anointing come upon his life. Now, that's why I have trouble with some of the other uh, books that aren't in the Bible that they say it's supposed to be because Jesus made a bird out of clay and he breathed on it and it flew off. Nope. He didn't do any miracles until he was anointed by God. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John say that. And so that's proving that you need the anointing of God. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, I say, help me, Holy Spirit. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. Jesus has proven these things, and he had a body, he had a, he had a soul, and he had a spirit. And the Holy Spirit anointed him, and then a voice from heaven, and, and some heard it, said, you are my beloved son, and you, I am well pleased. But people who weren't spiritual heard thunder. It's important that we need to recognize that our spirit man can hear the voice of God. And the whole gist of this is that we need to build our spirit up. And we need to quit walking by our flesh and by our soul, our, our body and our soul. And the Bible calls that when the soul command takes over, uh, and you're, it'll control your flesh. Yeah. And so you, so let, let's keep going. One more. John 14, 26, Jesus said, he's about to leave. He's about to be crucified. He says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. The Holy Spirit is coming. Jesus said the Holy Spirit coming. Matter of fact, in John 15, 26, said, when the helper comes, who I, Jesus, will send to you from the Father, that is the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, will testify about me. Three parts. The Father, right now, the Father's on the throne. Jesus is at his right hand, and the Holy Spirit's on the earth, living in you. I know we tried to get the children to understand that Jesus comes into your heart, but actually it's the Holy Spirit. Recognize the Holy Spirit is one that you cannot get saved without the Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't, you know, he, he didn't come down to live in your heart. It's the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the same Holy Spirit that anointed Jesus. Well, it's starting to feel good to have the Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit dwells in you, and, and he's not weird, okay? A lot of people think, well, I don't want that Holy Spirit stuff because it, people get weird. No, they're weird. Yeah, it is right there. That's enough. <laughs> and you're like the timing of the Lord. That was a sneeze in case y'all was wondering that. <laughs> so so uh, do we got it that God's three parts? I know there's, there's doctrine out there that God's oneness, there's oneness and all this and that and the other, but, but yeah, God is one God, but there are three parts to him, just like you are. You're one person, but you have three parts. When you get to heaven, you're still going to be three parts because you're going to get a new body. Hey, and you're going to learn how to walk in the Spirit for real. Well, all of us have to deal with our, our, our flesh and, and our body. And, you know, uh, and, you know somebody, a buddy put on Facebook that uh, when I get up off the couch, I'm, oh, and sit down. That's because your body's getting old. It happens because of sin in the earth. Not because we have a sin that made us ache and pain. Could be, but sin's in the earth that causes us to get old. You weren't made to get old. You weren't made to get sick. That's why you don't want to die. You weren't made to die. But because sin entered the earth through Adam and Eve, and there are grandpa and grandpa, grandma and grandpa, we receive that, that spirit or that flesh. We, our spirit man wasn't, wasn't created like God started. Let's get in. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm trying to hold back. Number two, man is three parts. Did I say God's three parts and man's three parts? Last, last Sunday, I talked about in Luke 16, the rich man and Lazarus and how they went to hell and Lazarus went to uh, paradise. But see, that was their soul and spirit, but they still had fingers. Their bodies were buried. And they had a soulical man, and the rich man could remember his brothers. 
Man, they were living like me. They don't need to come to this place. Send somebody. And Abraham said they got the word of God, the prophets, and the scriptures. They got the commandments and the prophets. They got preachers, and, and, and that's why God set it up for people to receive. And so let's look. We're going to dig into this just for a minute. Uh, uh, back again, the First Thessalonians 5.23. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved. Remember, we're spirit. We are a spirit, number one. Even though you haven't lived in the spirit, you live up here most of the time, me too, but we have to fight to build up our spirit, man, to live in the spirit that we would not fulfill the lust of our flesh and our soul. Because when your soul and your spirit or your soul and your body get in agreement, that's where drugs come in, alcohol, pornography, uh, all these lusts, all these things come in because you're a, you're a solical man, okay? But we want to be spirit beings. God's called us. He made us to live by the Spirit. And so let's look in Genesis 126 from the beginning. Genesis 1, 2, and 3 will tell you some things that happened, and, and God will unfold some things. But look what it says. Then God said, let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. We have dominion over creeps. I always like Charles Cap said that, but you know, remember we're made in the image and the likeness of God. Now come on. It's time to be holy. It's time to be holy as He is holy. Well, I can't. Yes, you can because I'm teaching you how. Stay with me with this. Walk through this whole series with me because God wants your body holy, he wants your mind holy, and he wants your spirit holy. Guess what? When you get born again, your spirit becomes holy. Your spirit, man, is what gets recreated, but it's still weak. It's like the baby over here and the baby over there. That's their babies. They, they don't know not to yell out. They don't know how to control themselves. Hmm? But we do. I used to tell the youth, I said, look, you need to go to the bathroom now. Unless you're wearing diapers, you don't have permission to get up and leave out of here. And none of them had diapers on. I said, because you can control your flesh. Don't tell me you can't do something. You can control yourself. You're sitting here quiet and not out trying to out yell me because you're controlling yourself to, you know, and about, about 11.45, you're going, your flesh is going to go, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. And so, so we, we're breaking down some things, and, and look, we're, go, we're made in the image of God, okay? So let's go to A, on your sheet, the body. The most easiest thing, the easiest thing that we can understand is our body because we feel it, we smell it, we taste it, you know? Uh, we have the five senses, and we touch the natural realm. And I'd love to get into it. Man, I'm just so full with this, but listen to me. Your body gives you authority to be in the earth. Your body is a God-given authority to walk in the earth and have dominion. Not, I can't have dominion over him. You know, he said, submit to the pastor. You, I don't tell you how many kids to have, what kind of car to buy. That's not my place. Submitting to me is that we're going to do the kingdom business, and what I'm preaching is what you got to submit to. Because it's God's plan for our church, but it's God's plan for you as an individual to be a spirit man or a spirit woman. Listen to me. The Bible says, let us make man, male and female, he made them. Get off that kick that men are supposed to be just in charge. Man, we'd be in bad shape because we wouldn't have any kids. Huh? And, and so think about it, uh, but there, we're not, I'm getting, I'm, let me get off on a stump right there. Come on. Women too. Jesus' mother, Mary, was there. You know, they, they were women who supported him all through life. So the body. Let's break down Genesis 2, 7 right quick. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Now, now, this is different. If you go, and we don't have time, but go and read Genesis 1, and God said, let there be light, and God said, and God created animals, and God created fish. Let the water bring forth fish. 
and let the, let, the, let the ground bring forth trees. But God created man different. And so hear me. If you got a dog, guess what? Your dog has a soul and a body but not a spirit. It has a personality because guess where the personality seats is in your solical man. And as cute and as loving as that dog is, and you, you, you know, just like a little kid, you can put out some M&Ms and don't just get one. Are you kidding me? Handfuls. They got one in their mouth, but they're walking away with handfuls because that's their flesh. Well, guess what? You grew up, and you know people say, well, we're just human. Uh, 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 we're just mammals. No, no, no. We're in the God class. You need to change your thinking because you know what? It happens that we are mammals and that we can be solical just like an animal, and you can do terrible things like an animal, but you're not called to be that. You're called to be a child of God, and you're a child of God that has a body, and your body gives you authority. I mean, there are some people that have passed from this life to the next that I would love to talk to, people that I I knew in the past. I'd love to sit down and visit with them, but they don't have a body where I can't talk to them. I have to talk to the Holy Spirit. I have to ask the Holy Spirit to help me or to send me people that have understanding of what I'm trying to do or what I need to know, understanding work. I mean, it, it, this works for work. You know, well, that's for preachers. No, man, the devil used to tell me that. It's for preachers. No, it's for everybody. And the Word of God will help you as you learn to be a spirit person. And God will help you at your job because you can hear the voice of God. And so let's get in tune. And I'm not saying you're going to be a preacher. You're supposed to be a spirit being. Let's just keep going. So, we have a body, and it's classified. We can identify it, and we have our senses, uh, see, feel, smell, taste, touch. And, and, and so, how does your body talk to you? The two quickest, easiest I can think of is you're hungry. Well, I'm hungry. Ooh. And then you get hangry. Anger, you know, hang, hang, hangry. Are we going to eat, you know? And the other one is, and if you're like me, uh, go out the building, the door, and run up that hill. Your body will talk to you. Oh, 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 stop, 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 stop. Now, I want to remind you that your body is supposed to be your slave. You're supposed to control it and tell it what to do and take, take authority over it. I'm going to remind you that your, your, your solical man is supposed to be in agreement with your spirit. Hmm? It's supposed to be your servant, and your spirit is supposed to be king. So your spirit would say, I need you to volunteer to serve coffee. Your soul says yes. Your spirit, your body says yes. And so then you're out there, and your solical man says, say hi, smile, greet them, serve them coffee. I'm building the kingdom. I'm doing kingdom business. This is what you're doing. Or, 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 or somebody has a flat. All right, Lord, do I need to stop and help them? Pull over and help them. I was telling Buddy, we was talking about how the devil, how the devil works, you know, and there was a guy that uh, my pastor told the story of, and my pastor was religious when he was growing up, and we all have. Some of you are religious too, so maybe you won't, you won't get it. But anyway, he, this man got saved, and he still smoked. How can he be saved and smoking? This is back in the 50s, y'all, 60s, okay. But mentality that people, smoking's a bad habit. Come on, eating Twinkies is a bad habit. Y'all got one? No, anyway. <laughs> Things are bad habits that don't send you to hell. And he couldn't understand how come this man got saved, gloriously saved. He quit cussing. Why can't he quit smoking? Well, nobody said anything to him, but the Holy Spirit began to work on him, and the Holy Spirit told him, you need to quit smoking. And so Sunday, he come up and said, I'm quitting smoking. Tuesday, he's driving down the road, and somebody had a flat. He pulls over to help, and he gets the man's tire changed, and the dude's a cigarette salesman, and he starts giving him cartons of cigarettes. He goes, I never was given a carton of cigarettes, but here I quit. Ain't this the devil? Hey, he always trying to bring back temptation. That's a physical temptation. If you have never been addicted to nicotine or, or things like that, you don't know. that. But you know what? Let's start naming coffee. Anybody addicted to coffee? Don't talk about my coffee, Pastor. Don't look down your nose at people who are addicted to things. Okay? 
pray for them and let's believe God for deliver them of whatever it is. I mean, I pray for people that are addicted to pornography, but I need to pray for people in every area of life. And that's our flesh can get addicted. I mean, you look, and it starts with your soul command because, you know, I, I, I was a fourth grader, and I started dipping snuff because I saw people's eyes respected chewing tobacco. I thought, well, hey. I picked up Coke bottles, you know, 35 cents, $3.50 for a can of snuff now. 35 cents, and I was picking up Coke bottles out of the ditch to get me some skull. I mean, I'm fourth grader. We was, we was country boys, but you better watch them. That slip up on you. Anyway, my point is you can get addicted to anything, TV. Well, come on, let's get addicted to God. Let's get addicted to God. And it's not that, that, that God's going to be mad at us if we don't. It's not out of obligation. That's what religion makes it, an obligation. You've got to pray. You got to pray. You got to do this. You got to do that. That's religion. Be led. I've taught, you know, to pray an hour. I can teach you how to pray an hour. But I don't pray an hour all day, every day, all the time. But sometimes I look up and it's been an hour. You, you're being led by God. And, and God will have you pray and you just be led by him. Don't let people condemn you because you hadn't, pre, pre, you know, prayed an hour. Pray. If it's only five minutes, glory. It's better than not. And so, so that's your, but you know what? You got a big enough battle instead of people, your own flesh and your soul will come in. I, I tell the story all the time about the pastor who said, I'm going to pray. I'm going to dig in. I'm going to pray right now. And as he knelt down and he started praying, he goes, those cows, do their horns outside their ears or inside their ears? Your soul will come in, will get you all bum fuzzled. I'm going to give you that word. Or all crossways. And he had to get up and go look. Broke up his prayer time to go see if where the horns were on a cow. Is that not, that's why your soul command will fight you and your body will fight you. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm, hu I'm sleepy. I know, I know a minister, he, he, go, he, he said, I'm getting up. I'm going to study. I'm going to study. I'm going to study. And, and, and he would fall back asleep. His flesh. So he stood up on the edge of the bathtub and had his Bible. He ain't falling asleep now. The flesh don't want to get hurt. So he's studying now till he learned to discipline and make his body his slave. Come on, you got to do some things sometimes to change up some stuff. And so I want to look at this again. God formed man out of the dust and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Uh, uh, I love what somebody said. Uh, they were told by Hebrew scholars that he became a speaking spirit. See, God just created the uh, cows, and he created the goats and the chickens, and, and he created all that, but he didn't breathe into them. God breathed his spirit, his pneuma. New Testament calls it pneuma, his, his spirit life into a man. And Adam and Eve were spirit beings, and they lived by the spirit. Now, notice they walked in a body, and they lived in a garden, and, and they, they, they were to take care of the garden, to dress it, take care of it, keep it trim, keep it nice. He, they were equipped enough to name every animal on the planet. Oh, that's a cricket. That's not, well, he named them. That's a zebra, giraffe, whatever. He came up with names to name everything because God breathed himself into Adam. He gave him the wherewithal to be able to run the planet. Now, he said, you, this is your garden, but he said, don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So let's go to B. I, actually, I, I'll quote Romans 12, 1 all the time, present your body as a living sacrifice. And, and we got to remember there's an inner man. And so let's go to be our soul. And define, define your soul is the seat of your memory. Your feelings, your imagination, uh, your convictions, your desires, your affections, that's in the solo command. But where the confusion comes in is, is, is even if you go to the dictionary and different concordances, they say uh, God created man and, and they, they tie the soul and the spirit together. And it is attached, but it's different. 
you're a soul because your solar command, the Bible says the belly of a man is the candle of the Lord. We'll get to that. But your solar command has to be submitted to your spirit because your spirit is what gets born again. Your spirit is what contacts God. And so we got to maintain our spirit life. Now, I'm not beating anybody old head. If you don't have, think you have a spirit life, well, today's the day to change. You can have a spirit life. You were created. If you don't have a spirit life, I don't care if I gave you a million dollars, it'd kill you. You look at the people who have money, and you think money's all that. If I had money, but they're on drugs. They're, they're addicts to all kinds of things. They're not satisfied because they're not born again, or they're not living by the Spirit. People can get saved and not live by the Spirit. Makes you question and wonder, well, are they saved? Well, that's between them and God. I'm not their judge. But my goodness, you, we're supposed to develop our spirit, man. And so uh, let's, let's look at Romans 12, 2. R- remember, 12, 1 said, for since your body is a living sacrifice, it's supposed to be your slave. 12, 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Your mind has to come in line with the will of God. You have to keep your mind as a servant to your spirit, and you have to feed your spirit, man. If you're not feeding your spirit, man, your spirit's weak, and you're controlled by your solical man. I, I talked to a man in town. He's a businessman. He said, you know, I don't know if I'm saved or not. And, and I asked him, do you want to be? And uh, kind of backed him up. But he said, I don't know if I'm saved or not, but I was raised by godly teachers. So my dad died when I was 10 or 11 in coal mines in West Virginia. And I was raised by teachers, and they disciplined me, and they taught me what was right from wrong. What I'm saying is he's a good man. He doesn't know if he's saved or not. You can be a good person in your soul and not be born again. And people that are are the hardest to get saved a lot of times are people who are good in their mind because I'm not as bad as all y'all. And y'all Christians, and you just cussed out our neighbor. You just cussed out the girl at McDonald's, and I know you go to church. What is that about? Because they got in their soul. And don't look at me like you've never had a solical meltdown. A fit of carnality. When, you, when you're in the soul part and it's negative, that's carnal. The Bible calls it fleshly, carnal. You don't want to live by your flesh. You don't want to be in your carnal mind. You want to live in the spirit. But my goodness, you all know that you can have a weak moment. And that's where you might have to go, okay, I need to repent to you. I apologize for having that fit. Meltdown. Come on. If we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And I've seen some of the greatest ministers in the world, and they've, been, they've gotten fleshly. But that ain't God's will for us. We have got to, we can't use that, well, I'm not as bad as them. God don't, not, when you stand before God and you say, well, I'm not as bad as them, that don't matter. It's what you did with what was given to you. It's what you did with the Word of God that you heard and received, how you walked in it. And so it's, it's not about just doing good works. It's receiving God and walking in the Spirit and getting our mind right. You know, it was a saying they said at camp, you know, attitude check from the neck up. And that you got to get your mind in agreement with your spirit. So, so the spirit and the soul is so closely knit. How do you just dis- distinguish between the soul and the spirit? Because, see, God God has a personality, folks. We're made in the image of God. We have personality. He does. Have you ever noticed that you don't see much of Jesus' personality? Is there anywhere in Scriptures you find where Jesus was laughing? See, a couple of times where he got upset. The Bible says you can be angry and sin not. But having an argument with a person and yelling and screaming at them is not what Jesus did. Matter of fact, he only got upset with the spiritual leaders of the day. You can't beat up somebody and say it's a spiritual battle. You can't beat babies up. You can't kick a baby and say, get up and walk. They're only through two months old. Well, there's two-month-old Christians. They may have been in church for 40 years, but they're still two-month-old Christians. 
And arguing with them is not bringing them up. You need to demonstrate the Word of God to them. So let's demonstrate the Word of God today. Let's live by the Spirit. And so let's look at Hebrews 4.12. And that's why I talk about the Word of God so much. We have got to be Word of God. We have to live by the Word, walk by the Word, study the Word, read the Word, talk the Word to grow our spirit. Now, you can get the Word up here and have it be full. I, I, I had a cousin that had his doctrine in theology, and he never preached a sermon that I know of, but he'd sure argue about how bad Cuttings was. And I'm like, dude, you ain't called to do that. Go preach somewhere. And he wanted to bring up the craziest stuff and argue about it. I'm not arguing with you. You go on with your doctrine and theology. It's all up here. It's not anything in here. You got to have not the word up here, but the word in here too. How do you know you got the word? I'm jumping ahead. How do I know that I got the word in here? It's because I am meek and humble and I walk in love and joy and peace and gentleness and kindness and meekness. Huh? The nine fruits of the Spirit have to be manifest in you. And you have to maintain them. And we'd say, well, don't, you know, have you ever heard somebody, don't pray for patience? Anybody ever heard that? Don't pray for patience, boy. Now the Lord's going to test you. Oh, baloney. The devil's going to test you. You really believe that? He's your enemy. That's a religious thing. You already have love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, meat. You have the nine fruits of the Spirit, but you haven't developed them. Hmm? Anybody that can run a mile, they just didn't go, oh, hey, I'm running a mile today. You want to join me? No, you better be going a little bit at a time. I, I told about my, my, my great track event, and I had two buddies going to run the mile with me. They didn't practice a lick, and they, did, they fell out the first, the first lap, four laps. And they, they fell by the wayside. I'm running the second lap. What happened to them? They're supposed to be helping me. We're supposed to be doing this as a team. They quit. So start developing. Don't quit. Develop yourself. Develop yourself. And so for the Word of God is living and powerful. Powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing and even division of the soul and the spirit. Hmm. Joints in the marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The Word of God will help you understand, is this a good thought or is it a God thought? Is this a good ideal or is it a God ideal? Hmm. You also have the Holy Spirit that's your helper. But your Holy Spirit don't speak to this. Your Holy Spirit speaks to this. You're led by peace. You are always operating by peace. The Holy Spirit, he's the, he's the, the peace of God. He's going to say, that's right, that's good, that's good. If somebody gives up and gives a word, you're like, okay, okay, okay. Receive. Take a hold of it. Take a hold of the word. And, and listen to me. Your mind don't want to follow the word. Yeah, you it's your servant. Go get my Bible. And your flesh should jump up. Where's my Bible? <sighs> Just saying. So that's why you've got to stay in the Word to discern. But, you know, some of it's pretty easy for me. You know, Pastor, I'm just going to go beat him down. Uh, that's not God. <laughs> You know, Pastor, I, I, I'm thinking, you know, my wife quit cooking on me on Wednesdays. I, I'm leaving her. Really? Hold on a minute. You know? But something, you know, people have, this is where your routine's at. Rush, I, you know, I know y'all hadn't heard, I've heard men say, 5 o'clock, dinner better be on the table because he's man, he's in charge. Yeah. I can tell you stories, but anyway. The routine's up here and in here. I got to eat. I've been to the hospital praying for people, and they come out of surgery, and they're hungry because they hadn't ate in 24 hours. <laughs> they didn't lie. They're like a bear. <laughs> they didn't bring me something to eat. <laughs> I'm like, man, your flesh is controlling you, dude. I mean, this, is all, all, this explains a lot of things. Your frustrations don't come from your spirit. They come from your mind. And yeah, frustrations can be holy, 
But most of the time, it's from your mind and your body and your thinking. Your thinking will hold you back. Man, our mind is our enemy. It will talk you out. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not blessed. I don't think God wants me to be. And I, 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 I just don't even believe in that. We're about to go to sea, which is our spirit. Listen to the story. I, I heard a story of this, this young girl. And she said, you know, I was about 21, three years ago or whatever, and I am t- I'm through with Christianity. Deconstruction stuff, you know, it's happening. I, I don't understand it. I, I don't, she never was, said I never was sold out either. Never gave it my all. But she said, I'm through with it. And said she went out into the world and she got into new age, got into crystals, got into these other things, started praying to ancestors. Mm-hmm. And she said after three years, you know, I was doing sage in my house and then things were happening. I'm like, that ain't, that ain't what I want. She woke up one, one night and said it's the biggest demon I've ever, I didn't even know they existed like that. And she goes, this is not what I want. And she started praying to her ancestors and doing her incantations and her chants. And it wouldn't leave. And she's like, you got to get out. And she said, it levitated me off the bed by the throat, and I'm choking. Now, see, we're talking about spiritual things. Now you're getting weird, Pastor. Hear me, y'all. If there's a demon standing in front of me, there's two angels beside him. Okay? You never outnumber. And then you got Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the Father. And, you know, people say, well, that's weird. Let me tell you, why is it all on TV? Because it's trying to make you think that's weird and it can't happen. This does not understand spiritual things. This wants to chase what feels good, what they want to do, and this body goes right along with it because, you know what, they want to do what feels good. I, man, I had a guy yell and scream at me. He was in prison for doing drugs, and he's screaming, you don't know what it's like for that stuff to run through your veins. I said, you don't know what it's like to have God on the inside of you. Well, my daddy was a deacon. I said, I ain't talking about your daddy. I'm talking about you. I mean, the Holy Spirit rose up in me. I started yelling back at him. But I wasn't yelling explicits like he was, I was yelling, God loves you. God wants to flow through your veins. God wants to fill you up. You've only seen it. You've never tasted it. And so anyway, I left you hanging. This girl's choking. (laughs) And you know what? She said, in the name of Jesus, and it dropped her. We sang about the name of Jesus. You need to be praying in the name of Jesus and declaring the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus over you because that develops your spirit, and it's not about just going through a routine because you know what? We, we, this light up here likes uh, uh, routines and everything be set order, and some of you worse than others. You know, I got some OCD in me, and, 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 you know, some of you just way worse than I am, but my, my point is uh, that that's not spiritual. Sometimes God wants to have you do something different and learn to be led. So we got to develop our spirit. And and so this girl used the name Jesus. Uh, Jesse DePlante on the airplane one time, and he witnessed this guy. He goes, no, I'm I'm agnostic. Another guy said, I'm an atheist. And the plane did this, and they both cried out to Jesus. He said, no, y'all don't know him. Y'all don't know him now. Don't Don't be doing that. And so, so, see, that's the only, the only one who saves is Jesus. The only one who delivers is Jesus. The only one that can help us. And, and we learn about Jesus in our spirit, man, not in our head. Because some of you say, well, I'm not smart enough. I, I'm not educated enough. That's why I had to read that page. Because God's not looking for the smartest ones. He's not looking for the most educated. He's not looking for ones with the best future. Remember what she said? He's looking for one whose heart. Man, whose heart, whose spirit. See, it's, it's, it's not this not that heart, it's the heart. It's like the best part of you is your spirit. The best part of the watermelon is the heart. Come on, y'all like watermelon, anybody? I don't. My wife eats it all. I like certain things, but you know what? The heart, you can't turn that down. The best part of you is your heart, your spirit. And God made it that way. And you can communicate with him. And so you're a spirit being. 
And God's been trying to bring us back to walk in the Spirit since the beginning. Now, I got to use, I'll probably use this next week too, but I, I just, the, the Lord gave me this just, just sitting on the front pew this morning. Adam and Eve walked with God. They ate of the fruit. What was the fruit called? The, where did it come from? What, tree, what was the tree called? Knowledge. Where does knowledge at? They became solical and not spiritual. God said, you're good. You're good. You can eat from the tree of life. Build your spirit. You're going to live forever in your flesh. But they chased knowledge. Ever met a professor in a college who thought you're just a peon? I've had some. You're just an old hick. You don't know nothing. And you do. You don't know God. Come on. And so, so we become solical. We want to learn knowledge. We want to have understanding. And man has been chasing knowledge and understanding and to make themselves better than God since then. But here's where I wanted to go. Who was their sons? Cain and Abel. And they were not spiritual. They were solical. And Cain killed Abel in the beginning. You'd think it'd take, you know, maybe 20, 30 years, 40 years. They live in hundreds, some, hundreds of years. You'd think it'd been 120, 30, 40 years. Cain kills Abel because he's jealous. Uh, God didn't accept his sacrifice, and he's mad up here. Mad at God, but he takes it out on Abel. Your soul, be careful. Quit justifying how you live by your soul and learn to get into the Word and fill your spirit. So let's go. To our spirit, man, C is the spirit. Remember, you are a spirit. You have a soul who's housed in a body. Mm. In, in Proverbs 20, 27, in the King James, it says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. The spirit, the spirit of a man. The spirit. It's not capital S. It's not the Holy Spirit. It's your spirit. You are a spirit. And you search, come on, the Spirit searches everything on the inside. Come on, it wants to have control. Make it king. Make it king. The belly of the man's a candle of the Lord. The Spirit of the man's a candle, you know, a candle of the Lord. And, and John 3, 3, this is what Jesus said. Now, he's talking to Nicodemus. He said, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Don't get born again up here. You don't get born again in this. You get born again in your spirit. Now, Nicodemus returns and says, now, wait a minute. How can I go back into my mother's womb? Are you crazy? He goes, you're a teacher in Israel, and you don't understand spiritual things. How long have you been saved? And this may be new to you, but you're, you're learning spiritual things, and I'm not going to condemn you because you know what? I'm still learning it. And I'm still developing. I want more and more. Look at, look at John 3, 6. Isn't that what it is? Yep. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, is spirit. Little s, our spirit. We are born again in our spirit. You know what? I'd love to say you got a halo and some wings when you got saved, but you didn't. I, there's some people that cry their way into heaven or some people like, I receive Jesus. And turn around and walk and sit down. And you don't see any outward change whatsoever. Outward change does not mean an inward change. You can't judge it like that. And you can't judge it. But you know what? God, but you know what? The, your spirit can bear witness with somebody's spirit. Doesn't make you the judge. And he's not bearing witness that they're not saved. Then you need to lead them to say, but you know what? I've been in the jail doing preaching and, and then the Spirit of God going, that one, that one, that one. I'm like, what about that one? Is he going to kill me? Because my mind don't understand. My mind's like, what about that one? And I get to talking to him, and he is called to preach. And I'm like, what's he doing in jail? Because you can have a moment of flesh, and there's consequences. I'll tell you another crazy one. You had to walk to, I don't know why I'm on jail ministry, but I'm walking in, and there's drunk tanks. And this guy yells at me, man, help me. And he starts crying. I'm like, dude, what, what happened? He goes, I got drunk last night. I got married yesterday and got drunk, and I'm in jail. I'm like, what? He goes, but I didn't do anything. 
He said, I got in the car with my buddies. We're going to get more beer. I pass out in the back seat, and they rob the liquor store. And when we get pulled over, I'm passed out in the back seat. And my, my wife called me and said she's annulling the marriage. Mmm. Consequences, isn't it? Met people that killed somebody in a head-on collision. They were drunk and don't even remember. Driving. That's, that's our flesh and that's our solical man. Can't have a good time unless I'm drinking. Can't relax unless I'm drinking. Can't relax unless I'm smoking. Can't relax unless I'm on drugs. Can't relax until I do. Come on. You need to get in the spirit and the Holy Spirit will help your spirit to relax your mind and your body. Yeah. God didn't mean for you to take drugs to relax or get drunk to, 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 to relax. He wants you to be in the spirit. They walked God, Adam and Eve walked with God in the cool of the day, and glory be to God. It was relaxing and it was peaceful. I mean, we talked about, you know, God created this earth for us to enjoy. That helps our solical man. But God also wants to bless your spirit. Woo, so that is, which is spirit is spirit. And so you must be born again, and let's explain it, just in case you, you may understand it, but we're going to explain it. Go to Genesis 3, 6. I've already talked about it. I'm just rolling over it, but we're going to go over it from the Word. So when the woman saw that the tree of knowledge of good and evil was good for food, gluttony, that the, it was pleasant to the eyes, lust, then desirable to make one wise, power, I'm smarter than you. You don't know what I know. Come on. She took of its fruit and ate. Now, I'd love to say Adam was off in the plowing in the back 40, and it's all the woman's fault. But Adam was standing right there with her, and he should have said, whoop, 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 don't do that. He had authority to stop. He had authority to speak to that snake. If Jesus cursed a fig tree and it died, don't you think Adam, who's the, Jesus was the second Adam, and Adam's the first Adam. He could have spoke to that snake and it would have shriveled up and died. Or they'd have, if he's Cajun, they'd have ate it. Just throwing that in there. He took, took authority, but she turns and gives him some. He said, give me a bite of that. Oh, you didn't die. Oh, they did. Not physically. They died spiritually. Their spirit man died. And their body was not, was not covered with the glory of God anymore. They found out they were naked. And they put fig leaves around them. And God sacrificed two animals to make them clothes. That's the first sacrifice for sin. You ever think about it? You know, we don't sacrifice for sin. And some of y'all couldn't handle it if I had a sheep up here and was going to kill it and sprinkle you with some blood. But that's what they did. Thank God we don't have to do that. Because somebody had to be in charge of cleaning that mess up. We'd be burning it on an altar. But thank God Jesus once and for all gave his life, shed his blood for you and me to enter in to the presence of God, the Holy of Holies, and we don't have to sacrifice animals anymore. Hallelujah is right. So, so they died spiritually. Both of them eyes were open and they knew evil. They already knew good. Well, why in the world would God put a tree in there? Somebody said that was God's tree and it was the tithe. Here's another, th here's another scenario. The devil said, nobody will serve you. They all want to rebel against you like me. Nobody will serve you. And so God is looking for a people who will obey him and follow him with all their heart, just as our sister gave that word, all their heart, all their soul, all their might. God wants a people that love him. He wants a family. And he's not going to make you, you. You didn't get to pick your family. No, no. I didn't get to pick mine either. But you know what? I got to step into one that I am so grateful for. I'm in the family of God. We are in the family of God. God has, has made a way for us to be in his family. What we have to do is submit to him. Do what daddy says. Do what the father says. 
Well, it got quiet. Don't tell me what to do. That's your solical man and that's your flesh. Are you getting up at 5 o'clock? Man, if I was taking you on a fishing trip or whatever that would satisfy your soul, you'd get up at 5 o'clock or going deer hunting or bear hunting or going to buy, uh, 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 well, I'm going to spend $3,000 in clothes for you. Can you get up at 5? Yes, I can. <laughs> I, this, this, this one. Let me get it right in my head because this is off the hip. God, is it 1201? Where have y'all been? You're supposed to throw eggs at me. We got to close. What it is, the teacher's back there ready to throw eggs at me. All right, if I said, you know what, I'm going to give you a million dollars, would you take it? You'd have to think about a million dollars. Would you have to think about it? Nope. But let me ask you, you ain't got to think about a million dollars, but let me ask you this. If you knew you wasn't going to wake up tomorrow, would you take the million dollars? You have to trade your life for it. Makes it a little bit different, doesn't it? It does make a difference. What, what is your point? Is you, want, you need to live the life that you've given because your life is more important than a million dollars. You're more valuable than a million dollars. You're the most valuable thing on the planet. And God's called you to give your life to him because he wants to, you to fulfill that value. So God gave us the ability to communicate. And let me go back and we're going to close. Nothing satisfies but God. We're going to pick this up. Nothing satisfies but God. Not money. Because you want life more than you want money. And God is life. So bow your heads. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, come on, get your spirit man awakened today. God wants to touch your heart. He wants to touch your spirit. You must be born again to enter in the kingdom of God. I don't care what good works you do, what money you give, what I fed the poor. I, I, I prayed, I prophesied, I did all the things, and Jesus said, I never knew you. You're just doing good works. But he said, do the will of God. What's the will of God that you accept Jesus, the Son of God, and give your heart to him? If that's you, would you lift your hand? You've never asked Jesus to come into your heart. Glory be to God. All right, so everybody in here, we're all going to pray this together. Say this with me. Say, Father, I believe that you will awaken my spirit, that I will be a spiritual man or a spiritual woman. And I will walk in your ways. I will be strong in spirit. I will hear your voice. I will understand the word of God. And I'll live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen.